Hi guys, you're very welcome to another podcast here on this channel, Narc Con. Um, welcome to anyone that's new and please consider clicking those buttons for me, which would help a lot if you find the content of value. Today, I'd like to get straight into um, a question that came up in an email actually to me in relation to how to protect yourself against, in particular, the female narcissist, how to spot a female narcissist and how to deal with a female narcissist, particularly in the intimate relationship setting. So I have a podcast out already just called The Female Narcissist, which is a more generalized version. But for the person who proposed this question and just asked for a bit more in-depth advice, I'm going to give some pointers in this uh, podcast in relation to, in particular, the female version of the narcissist. And again, a lot of the things, the warnings, the way to protect yourself against a narcissist, you know, with the female aspect do kind of carry over into to the male narcissist as well. A narcissist is a narcissist. Um, the female will just maybe present slightly differently because of the, the gender difference. So again, this is a set of behaviours. There is no magical cure to say, oh, she's a narcissist. You know, definitely she's a narcissist just because she does one thing. People can be, come from stressed situations. They can, you know, be not their best selves at different times. And they can even present with a few of the characteristics that I'm going to list here or a few of the behavioural types. So it does take time, you know, to establish that somebody is possibly a narcissist. It takes time and a set of behaviours occurring over time to kind of give yourself a fair assessment that you might be dealing with someone who is narcissistic personality disorder. There are ways that I'm going to list here now in relation to in some way avoiding or protecting meeting a female narcissist. This is not foolproof. This is just a few things that you can consider doing. Um, and the other things are indicators that you might be with a narcissist and kind of to be on the lookout when you see some of these indicators, but not to just, you know, obviously say, well, these indicators are here, so I'm not pursuing the relationship. It does take time. The main thing, if you want one thing that will alert you to the fact that you're with a narcissist is your gut, is your primitive brain, is something saying, this person is different. This person makes me feel a bit anxious. This person has really hyped my feelings up more than you would normally feel when you're falling in love with someone. And we don't often want to listen to this part of our instinctual protective mechanism, our ancient, the ancient part of our brain that alerts us to possible danger because often the danger is exciting and pleasurable. So again, you know, if you're feeling very excited and you're, the pleasure is nearly too good to be true instantaneously and quickly, pull back, pull back, go slow. So with that said, let's list off a few things that might be of value to you in, in dating females. That's the best way I can say it. And if you have any pointers, please add them in the comments because a lot of people read all of the comments and get a lot of information from the comments. They resonate with them, etc. So it's of value to leave a comment. Okay, so how and where you meet a person in any of any gender is relevant. It's better to have a point of reference in relation to a new potential partner. And what I mean by that is, it's great to say meet someone through friends or through work or through family so that you have a point of reference in relation to other people's opinion of them prior to meeting them. So you're not just meeting a stranger on a dating site. And I know dating sites are popular 
and they're, you know, they can be a good way to meet people. But narcissists love dating sites. They just love them because they can do a PR job on themselves, present themselves in a certain way. And that's the information that you start off with on that person. So it kind of log logs in your mind as, as a, a personality characteristic of the person you're meeting. They do a great job on presenting themselves and they also do a very good job on information gathering on you before they actually meet you. So be careful of that one. It's a real hunting ground for narcissists. So a point of reference would be a good way to start an intimate relationship with someone or start dating someone. So you have some background information from them gathered from friends, family or work situation or something, some point of reference to go on. OK, so the person that asked me the question um, in relation to how to protect himself, and obviously this could be a female protecting herself as well from a female narcissist, um, would be he said he was very successful in relation to his finances and he ended up with a trail of female narcissists um, on, on the dating scene and his last um, experiences with uh, dating. Obviously, the best thing to do in this world at the moment is to keep your finances as private as possible. So don't be heading into a date revealing information about your finances. That's something that should come at a much later stage. Now, it might be obvious that you're well off or in a good position or in a good job. And a female narcissist will really sniff this out. And a female narcissist will ask you quite pointed questions in relation to your success. And, you know, if you were married before or if there's anyone, you have your sights on anyone or anyone coming back towards you. They want to know exactly what your position is, how free you are and how you are set up. So, you know, if someone asks you a lot of questions like that, that is a red flag. And the female narcissist will even subtly come in and ask you a question that might not be a direct question about your finances, but it might be something like, what car do you drive? Um, where do you go on holiday? How many holidays do you take a year? That kind of thing. So that it'll build a picture for them as to what you can, can and cannot afford. It's privacy about finances. Um, the other thing to do would be, you know, if you're you met someone a few times, you really like them, you feel that you're kind of falling for them, you'd like to take it further. If you can do as much research on their relationship history as possible, now they will present a good relationship history probably to you and a lot of valid reasons for leaving relationships or why things didn't work out. And the younger female narcissist has a lot more chances of success in camouflaging disastrous relationships of their past and giving very um, kosher explanations as to why relationships broke up. Older female narcissists, you're going to get a lot more probably visibility or red flags going off in relation to maybe multiple marriages. Multiple marriages are not always an indicator, but multiple marriages with the other set of behaviours are a red flag in relation to the female narcissist and male. So, yeah, you know, ask questions about their past relationships and assess the answers. Assess the answers in particular in relation to accountability. Do they take accountability? Do they give you reasons that they were at fault in the relationships not working out. And again, the cleverer female narcissists will come up with kind of taking responsibility to a certain extent for the relationship not working out. But if they talk about it more or if you, or if you question them more about the relationship, um, they may be putting more blame on the ex-partner and presenting as the victim. And actually, particularly with men, um, the female narcissist will look to the hero in you to save them, you know, that they've been through a very hard time and they're looking for a hero because they're actually 
a vulnerable, pure type of individual who's just so damn attractive, but just happens to have had a lot of bad luck and, you know, doesn't overly use their sexuality initially with you. They'll kind of appear like quite a pure type of woman who's just had a lot of misfortune in relationships and really needs a handsome hero to come in and protect her. So that kind of vibe going on is a red flag with, along with the other behaviours. If you move slowly, moving slowly is not something a female narcissist will like. She will pressure you to into an ownership position so that she feels, so that she gets you to call her your girlfriend in relation to when you go out with other people. She'll want to establish that kind of possession or ownership of you. So that'll move quite quickly. So if you don't move quite quickly on that, you may see some frustrations or some dissatisfaction or some dramatic outbursts from her in relation to the fact that the relationship's moving slowly. Uh, don't chase, don't overly chase females when you're trying to, you know, attract them guys, because playing hard to get is one of the oldest ways uh, females will go about attracting a male they don't want to look easy. They'll be very available, but unavailable at the same time. So you'll have to work really hard to get them. And actually, a lot of men love the chase. So don't chase the female person that you're interested in down the nth degree, if you know what I mean. There's a certain amount that you may do in the beginning of any relationship but if this person, if you seem to have to really, really work dreadfully hard to get this person interested in you and to chase them down, that's off. Like a normal woman would not require that of you, would not require that level of pursuit from you. So that's a game. And don't don't play it. Don't play it if someone is going to the extremes with that. Look at the employment history. And I know this may sound kind of counterintuitive to spotting a female narcissist. Look at their employment history because stability, um, taking responsibility for their own income, accountability and kind of not chopping and changing jobs too much. I mean, again, in this modern world, people do change jobs more frequently than in the past. But look for some stability, look for stability in areas, in all things, in relationships and in jobs. That can be another indicator that this person has a level of responsibility towards others and to their own income and work. Again, it builds a picture of who you're dealing with. Um, okay, so, in relation to drama, if there's a lot of drama around this person's life, female narcissists and people who are borderline, but kind of malignant borderline or stress borderlines love drama. It's a great indicator of narcissism because it conjures up and triggers emotions in people. And narcissists get bored very quickly and often cause dramas, sometimes, you know, without thinking because they don't build in the collateral consequences of their establishing control in the moment or leaving a great source of supply because they see someone more shiny on the other side. They'll often do stupid things that cause huge dramas as consequences of their irresponsible behaviour. But that is another indicator where there's a lot of drama in someone's life. And again, you can come across a very innocent person who's maybe even been with a narcissist who has a lot of drama going on at this point in time, but doesn't normally. So look for all of the set of behaviours together. Sorry for labouring that point, but... It is important that one thing does not establish that the person's a narcissist. If 
you have someone who's overblowing their achievements, like who's really doing a big pure job on their success and the fact that they have a lot of money and, you know, they're building their career up. And over time, that doesn't actually stack up. You're kind of getting a few ah uh -uh moments that, well, if they're so successful, why aren't they here or there? If they're so successful, why are they in such a poor, maybe financial position? I'm sorry, this does sound to go around um, the finances, but often with female narcissists, they will go after men for their money. Not always, but they often do, or for status, just like the other, just like the other gender. But yeah, this is a kind of a, this is a continuum that I have found working with people who have been in relationships with narcissists, that this is often a big, a biggie. So look out for that, guys. Another huge indicator is if your friends and family are wary of this person or having mixed reactions. Some people are very good at detecting inconsistencies in other people and you may have someone in your family that's quite wise to people so check it out with them you know what do they think of the person and maybe they'll say it's too early to make any judgments they don't know they seem nice give it time and if that person is is usually good on a, a characterization of someone listen to them listen to them don't let that excitement and rush of adrenaline and dopamine overtake your logic you need to use logic in relation to your assessment of your new female partner the also on the topic of family the female narcissist if she wants a foot in the door may put you under pressure to meet your family quite quickly and again this has been you know pluses and minuses because your family may be able to indicate that they don't think that this is a great person for you but the other the other part of it is the female narcissist will realize that if she gets on very well with certain family members that those family members may influence you towards her in a more favorable light. So the female narcissist may come into your family, may want to meet them quite quickly, and then may be very good at love bombing certain members of your family who may be susceptible to the female narcissist charms. And in turn, obviously, you get it. Those family members praise the female narcissist up to you and say, wow, she's a great girl. Wouldn't it be lovely if the two of you, you know, got serious? She seems like she's a wonderful person, etc., etc. So again, if you're having an, an extreme reaction from family one way or the other, you know, just just listen to your gut. You know, if it's too good to be true, maybe it is too good to be true. And these are all generalizations. There's nothing that you can actually you know, pinpoint as, again, as the one thing other than your gut. Your gut brain is just amazing at alerting you to things that maybe you don't want to be alerted to, but it always pipes up and kind of, you can push it down to a certain extent, but it always goes on alert for you if you want to hear it. And if you know that you've, you know, possibly you're dealing with a female narcissist, Listen to it. Listen to it. That's the best advice I can give you guys. Okay, another indicator is observe. Observe how your new girlfriend treats others. Observe how she deals with, say, people in a restaurant that are serving, people in a store. Um, how she relates to other people is very important. Also, if there's a big charm offensive like we covered in the family, you know, you can often see a narcissist, you can see them even love bombing strangers for the reaction to come back to you, even from the stranger, that this person is a gorgeous person. But you will spot 
if you're with a narcissist for long enough, then being a bit derogatory to some people, particularly if you're not in the vicinity where you can hear, but it does happen sometimes in front of you that they will be a bit offhand or brisk or patronizing or put down to someone who they feel is beneath them. So guys, I'm going to do another video on how to actually deal with a female narcissist if you're trying to get away from one. If you've realized, you know, it's been, say, three months in in the relationship and you realize that you're with probably with a narcissist, how to actually extricate yourself from one or how to deal with one to really identify, you know, if you're with a female narcissist. This podcast was more about things you can do at the beginning to protect yourself or to observe. But the main the main thing I would say to you again from this podcast is trust your gut in relation to this new person. Go slowly and don't give more than you're actually receiving back. And I know that sounds, you know, quite harsh, quite transactional. But if you're giving and giving and giving and the person is taking and taking and taking, you're embedding yourself more in the relationship than the other person is. And it's kind of an indicator again, if you find yourself giving more than you're receiving, that it's not a good position to be in. And it's a good idea to pull back and to let that person, you know, come to you with an equal amount of what you're giving. And if they don't, that's another indicator that you might be with a narcissist. If they get kind of a bit pissed off that you've stopped your generosity or stopped being so compliant or stopped being so agreeable, you know, that you kind of put your boundaries up a little bit, the female narcissist will often not like that. So guys, um, the next video again, as I say, will be on how to deal with a female narcissist if you just realise that you may have been caught by one in the early stages of a relationship or even further on down along the line when you're trying to extricate yourself from a relationship that's gone on for a few years when the light bulbs are going off and there's a lot of flashing lights around as to who this person is and how to extricate yourself as safely as possible. Until then, have a very good day and look after yourselves very well.